Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Sisterhood Society podcast. So today, the day you're listening to this is actually the day after our eight-year birthday, but we're filming it the day before just because um, obviously on our actual birthday tomorrow, we're going to be celebrating with all of you guys, hopefully doing some lives, lots of prizes and giveaways, and thanks to the people that have been here for anywhere from one to eight years. So we're so grateful um, to chat about this and celebrate this like huge monument. So that's going to be the topic of today's episode. But before we jump into that, Whitney, what is good in your life besides your really tasty orange juice I'm seeing? (laughs) I'm trying to help my adrenals. Um, What's good is uh, we attacked Kate's best friend, Britt Moses. Um, (laughs) Pestered her with questions about health stuff. She is a functional dietitian, right? Functional. She's a holistic dietitian. Holistic. Functional medicine. Um, and she has given us a new lease on life. She told me I wasn't eating enough, which shocked the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> She's been telling me that for literally like seven years. She's always like, Kate, you need to eat more. You need to eat more. <laughs> But it's not like, well, and you can get into this. It's not like you're supposed to eat more chips, you know? Yes. So she, okay. So we've been like, if you're part of the Patreon, you know that I've been on a little health journey. Have been for like three years now. <laughs> been on off. Um, I was trying to do keto and I do really well on keto. I lose weight really quickly, but it gets to the point where I feel like, my hair starts to fall out. (laughs) I can't sleep very well. Um, my body just needs carbs. So anyways, I was, I was talking to Britt about this and she's like, um, okay. Yeah, please don't do that. (laughs) She's like, how about we just focus on protein? She's like, just eat a lot of protein, really prioritize protein because what we want to do is balance your blood sugar. Cause what you're doing is you're feeling midday crash. And then the first thing your body wants is sugar because that's the quickest way to get glucose and give you that energy bump. And I was like, you know what, you, you're making a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, let's, let's try this out. And then we were asking her about like, if we had to, um, like calorie count or, um, minimize carbs or whatever. And she's like, you don't have to like really watch how much you're eating if you're eating the right things. Right. And that like blew my mind because it's so opposite to like what we've learned. We should have, I want her on the podcast. I want to go through, I've been like pestering her, pestering her. I'm like, please come on the podcast. Um, it's very much so uh, focused though on the person and you can't use like one rule that's helping someone else that will help you type of thing. So um So I feel like it would be almost kind of difficult, but if we kept it like high level about Mm -hmm. like lies that we've all believed about like diet, like from diet culture and whatnot, uh, I feel like it'd be fascinating and really like free up some women that are just like tied down with lies. Like, Mm -hmm. I just feel like it'd be really freeing. I feel like the Holy spirit would like really move in it, you know? (laughs) So anyways, that's my good. I'm very excited about it. We'll take you along for the ride. I promise. Yeah. I was going to add to that. I also feel like she, she had said that, but I, but she's also been very honest with us three and been like, yeah, I'm eating 2,500 calories because I'm breastfeeding, but that's like not right for you. So she, like, she was saying, she's like, it's not that I wouldn't want to do it. I just don't want it to be like Bible for someone and then be like, oh, you told me this and it's not right. But I do feel like the best and most freeing part of what she has said is that like, at least from us three's perspective, I feel like we've always been told not to eat carbs. You know, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but like keto is like that. And a lot of like, you know, all the fad diets are like, keep your carbs low, but it's like about what type of carbs you're using. So like, what, what did you say about potatoes when she was like, um, okay. So she told me like, just balance your food. She, obviously you want to make sure you're getting protein in, which is something that was very hard for me. I could easily be a vegetarian. Um, she's like, you want to make sure you're getting your protein in, but she's like, you also want to have like good complex carbs. So she's like, rice is great. Potatoes are great. And I was like, oh my gosh, you had me at potatoes. (laughs) Like I love potatoes. Yeah. Literally if I could eat them, 
for every meal, I would. Mm -hmm. And I haven't like allowed myself to or haven't been able to because I've been like keto conscious and whatever. But potatoes are so high in potassium and they're so good for you. Mm -hmm. And my body craves them. So clearly I needed to get back onto the potato train, which I have been. Um, but yeah, so like it's just been really freeing and I feel like I'm already sleeping better. I feel like my skin has kind of cleared up a little bit. It's, I don't know. Like there's just a lot of random things that have been like ailments that Mm -hmm. I'm like, I hope and pray this gives like a stress-free environment for my body and that I can eat food that I actually enjoy Mm -hmm. and that I can start seeing um, a turnaround. I actually already have. I feel like I'm seeing more energy too and I don't have any dishes in my sink. If that tells you anything, that should tell you a lot. So the health of Whitney's life is if there's dishes or not. No, for real. I feel like you can tell someone's mental health based Mm -hmm. off of the state of their home. And my home like has been on and off, like spick and span and then like not. And Mm -hmm. my kitchen is pristine. I still have loads of laundry I need to put away. So it's not like it's not like, you know, everything's gravy over here, but I don't have any. I actually issues. agree with that wholeheartedly because I think half of it is just having the motivation or energy to do stuff. Yeah. And the same thing. Like I spent an hour this morning just like cleaning up, which I would never do. I mean, my babysitter has not seen this house clean unless like Rebecca's coming to clean that day. Like it's, it is literally, I'm like, she has got to think that we just can't get it together. Like, <laughs> And this morning I was like, if only she was here to see what a miraculous recovery we are making. So true. (laughs) Well, and I, I do feel like the most freeing thing too, that Brit has given us. And again, if she will agree to get on the podcast, maybe we can like preview questions with her. So she doesn't feel like we like, you know, she's, she's actually very similar to Whitney's personality, but your Enneagram, Enneagram numbers are switched. She's a one nine. Or sometimes I think she's a one, two, cause she's a big helper, but, um, you're a nine one. So you're very similar and you're both like introverts and stuff, but she likes like preparedness and like, she's very particular. So I feel like she would want to like know what the questions were before and like have answers prepped. But, um, what was I just going to say? Oh, she, she is like, like Brit likes sweets, you know, like she's not the type of person who's like, I'm never going to eat dessert again. Like she has taught me a lot of, um, like healthier alternatives with sugars and flowers and like desserts that I actually like, like better than like a box mix cake or whatever. Um, so she's, and even Tara was like, I haven't been craving sugar for like three days. And she's like, well, you can have sugar. It just can't be like your number one. Whereas like, I feel like most people are like, don't eat any bad snacks. Like if you have a cheese, it, you will die. You know what I mean? Like you get to this point where you're like, it just it creates like so much like shame, guilt and shame shame around food. I like, I was on an eating plan last year. Um, and they put, they had me in a calorie deficit because I wanted to lose weight. That was like my number one thing. And I got to December and there was so much going on my life on in my life that I couldn't like keep up with it. It wasn't a lifestyle for me. And I felt like all I was doing was like binge eating Mm -hmm. and I was like, so ashamed and like so guilty. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to pause and just like mentally process everything that's going on. And I feel like I'm finally at a place where I'm like, you know, I am done with diets and I want to eat based on how my body needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. And I need to be okay with a few pounds of fluctuation I would really love to get to a point where my body can release the weight that it has gained, Same. but I'm at a place where I feel like I'm feeding it. Well, I keep telling my body, I'm like, you're okay now. <laughs> you're <laughs> safe. <laughs> you're safe. You don't need to be scared. I will feed you and I will feed you well. <laughs> but don't you think too, that some of this is not so much that the information she's giving us is different than what we've heard before, but that it's based on the timing of when we've received it. I think it's because both. I like yeah. weren't fully ready. I was not fully ready to be, I guess, because I feel like like when we talked with Renee, we there was a lot of these concepts that were similar. And Jen and like even your trainer. It's not like this is like rocket science. I think what she did is she kind of took like those diff, those different concepts from those different people mm-hmm. and put it together all in one, <clears throat> kind of meshed all three together. 
in something that was very easily understandable. Yeah. Um, and also gave a lot of freedom. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that's not, the biggest thing. it's not overwhelming. I yeah. think that's the number one thing too, is like you immediately, like with keto, I would have to psych myself up to be able to start it. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Winnie, just stop eating or like, just stop drinking coffee when you first wake up and eat an egg. And I'm like, hey, all right, I can do that. <laughs> will that help me? <laughs> will that make me skinnier? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, <laughs> it will. Um, No, I agree. And I do feel like the main thing that I have really appreciated is that she's always been very like forgiving with the information. Like it's very like, um, like you said, there's no shame in the way she's presenting it. Like I was dying because so Brit's birthday was on Friday and Brit is my, my closest friend. We've been best friends since we were like 14. She's like Tara's Holly Ray and Ash, like, and Whitney's aunt Kara. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You, you hit the nail on the head. Thank you. I'm teasing. Um, that's a, a long time podcast joke. If you guys haven't heard it, it was fun. <laughs> so fun. but, um, but we've been best friends for a really long time. So on um, Friday, it was her birthday. We went out for breakfast, just me, her, her husband and her baby. And she was like, like saying too, she's like, yeah, I was actually really proud of how honest Tara was. Cause you had said something like she rephrased it. And then you told me what you actually said, which was hilarious. You said something like, I'm either really good and eat like eggs and bacon, or I'm like egg McMuffin and candy for lunch. <laughs> it's true. There's like no in between. It's I'm either hot or I'm cold. <laughs> right. And we were dying laughing and she was like, no, but she's like the thing about someone like Tara or Tara is that like, you can't force people into it. Like they have to want it and they have to be ready. And she was like, and I, she was like, it wouldn't work if Tara wasn't honest. Like, she's like, I actually really respect that. She said that, you know what I mean? Cause if you were trying to hide it and you're like, Oh, every once in a while I go to McDonald's instead of it being like, you know, daily, more <laughs> daily or regular thing, then that's not like even starting the relationship off. Great. We act like she's like become our nude life food counselor. Let's just say like, we have not paid her a dime. Like we're in a group chat. <laughs> well, if it tells you anything, uh, we went to Starbucks the other morning before we started this whole thing. And I had gotten the kids McDonald's and then we went to Starbucks and we were going through the line and Briggs was asking for a cake pop. And I was like, no bad. We're not going to cake pop this time. I'm just getting a drink. And Britain was like, but cake pops are for breakfast. And I'm like, oh no, this is what I think. And anytime we, we went through McDonald's the other day and um, I can't even remember what we'd stopped to get. And Briggs was so mad that I didn't get him a chest brown, which is a hash brown. <laughs> You're like, oh no, I failed them. <laughs> so, but yes, I mean, I think the biggest thing that we, <clears throat> I think, so the main reason that I reached out to her initially is I want to talk about my hormones because I feel like I was feeling extreme fatigue and I knew my diet sucked, but I was feeling like my skin feel is off. Like I just felt like there was multiple things that were off and I've done blood work with the doctors like that, but I didn't feel like they really necessarily dig into your hormones. And so I was just curious if there was something specific I should be doing or could be doing for that. And she was like, you can definitely do stuff for your hormones, but she's like, if your diet sucks, your hormones are for sure going to be off. So she's like, start there. And then, you know, we can always talk about deficiencies later. And, um, and so, so that, that was kind of the main reason I went into it, but over the last couple of weeks, spending time with our cousins and different things, and just talking about like <clears throat> growing up and like how we viewed weight loss and all those things. Um, I was just thinking Whit and I were talking about this on Friday. We wanted to stop with our, and our family, because, um, I don't want my kids to have an unhealthy view of food or their body or weight loss or any of those things I want. And the reality of it is, is that we don't have healthy food in our home, Mm -hmm. um, or haven't had it. And I don't, this is what the time I should be teaching that to them, right? Like it's not that we won't ever have chips around. I'm not going to, you know, send them to school with kale chips and stuff like that. I mean, like, there's obviously going to be balance, but, um, but I also want them to have more majority of the healthy stuff than chest rounds for breakfast. every day. <laughs> and I think that's the, the main thing I felt like I learned in the past two years, but even like, I'm, 
I think Whitney said this too, but I'm someone who like really, really likes to understand the why behind the motivation. Like I remember when I first started with a trainer, she was like, okay, well, we're doing this exercise because it works the front part of your bicep. And I was like, oh, okay. So I know that hammer curls are, I don't even know. I think it is hammer curls. Yeah. It's like this part of your bicep. And same thing when I was doing that specific diet for egg retrieval, um, my friend Courtney had literally said like, these are the list of foods and this is what each one does. And so I like went and looked it up and you can literally just go to Pinterest and say like, what are the benefits of strawberries? And it'll tell you like what, you know, what vitamins that you get from it or like what benefit it does to your different organs. So I feel like even something as simple as like knowing the why behind why you should eat asparagus is so helpful because it makes it more worth it. And it makes it more exciting that, you know, like how it's like affecting your body in a better way. And, um, the coffee trick, this is probably like, before we get into all the stuff with Brit and like, actually like, hang, you know, hang out with her on a podcast, her like biggest tip is like, don't start your morning on empty stomach with coffee. Cause it, it spikes your cortisol, right? Is that what the main reason is? So your cortisol is already raised because essentially you fasted through the night. It's not like you're getting up in the middle of the night and eating. Um, so your cortisol is already at the height when you wake up. So to break the fast, obviously you eat breakfast and what that does is it inhibits cortisol levels and helps you kind of balance back out, but you need to have a balanced breakfast with protein and healthy carbs and fats, healthy fats to be able to, um, like stabilize your blood sugar throughout the day. So like the first meal of the day kind of sets a tone for your body. Mm -hmm. And she's like, do not start it off with coffee. Cause what that does is it's a, uh, a stimulant essentially. And you're just increasing your cortisol levels. So you're just like, Hey body, we're going to be anxious today. (laughs) So she said that she told Whitney that like, cause you said, I, I usually drink coffee until noon. She was like, cool. You're telling your body, like, we're not eating today. Or something like that. <laughs> so she's like, I told Whitney that. And I was honest. And I was like, no, Whitney can take it. Like you can tell her that she, and she, she was like, I can tell Whitney's like so interested in this and like, is obsessed. But she was also like excited about how excited Tara was because I don't think you guys have ever like connected on food or whatever before. Well, I haven't really had a whole lot of reason to interact with her, you know, yeah. in general, just because it's not like we run in the same circles. It's not like I see her very often. I mean, obviously right. it's just been solely through you. So, so yeah, it's been fun. I mean, I've always liked her and enjoyed her company when I have been around her, but it's just been so few and far between. So, yeah. but it does, it is funny because I feel like the older we get <laughs> that our friend groups just keep melding together yeah. <laughs> and there is no, like, <clears throat> there is no like separation. It's just more like you know, cause we're hanging out with Natalie when we come or Jake and Dakota, or you guys come and hang out with Pat, Holly and Ash and obviously cousins and all that stuff. So it's yeah. just, it's just funny how that goes away. Well, <laughs> and as you get older, you're in the same phase of life. It's not like you're like when Tara graduated high school and I was in third grade, like you didn't want me to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's <was> different, <laughs> very different, uh, <laughs> lifestyles at that point. Yeah. Different mm-hmm. vibe now. But speaking um, of, um, hanging out with, with different friends or whatever, we got the chance to hang out with Hillary. This is our Hillary show. Oh, Hi, Hillary. I did mention Hillary in the last podcast, but I did. I just glazed over it really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I noticed that I did give her a shout out. Um, <laughs> but she happened to be home. Oh, cause steel was practicing at ISU. I uh, was wondering why they were there. Yeah. And then I guess this week they're going to be at Purdue, but, um, I happened to see on her stories. I was like, Oh, that's her parents house. Like, so she's in town. And so I'm like, how long are you here for her? Let's yeah. do like, lunch or dinner. Um, so it was just like Friday was like the pinnacle of like a, such a great day. It was <laughs> a good day. Great. We got to eat outside. We had Mexican food. We got to meet up with Hillary. It was just like, it was one of the first time in, I would say probably a year, year and a half that I didn't feel guilty about eating lunch on a work day. (laughs) Like it it was crazy. Cause I feel like so many times I'm usually like, I can feel my watch like pinging and I know that I'm getting like tons of text messages and I'm feeling like anxious. And it was just like one of those, it was, I think that's what just made the culmination of the whole thing. Like such a beautiful day. Cause it was just nice and it was relaxing and 
we got to catch up with her and we had, it was just like, I just felt like we, it was kind of an extension of our conversation with Britt, but also just getting to catch up with her, like what's going on in her life and what she's, what her and Steele's next steps are and stuff. And so it was just really fun. I love, <clears throat> I know we've said this before, but I love those relationships with family, especially cousins that you can just pick up where you left off, even mm-hmm. if you're not actively in each other's lives daily. And I think that's too special. Yeah. And the older we get, I cherish those relationships so much more. Cause I was telling my dad, I was like, you know, people always joke with us. Like, how could you work with family, let alone, like, how are you close with family? And he made the comment. He's like, I think the older you get, you, you realize it's all you got, mm-hmm. you know, it really is. I mean, you've always got friends, but the people that are going to for sure have your back in the midst of a fire is going to be the ones that have a connection to you in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it is special. Yeah. I do need to give Janelle a shout out because we forgot to mention on our last podcast. So we got to hang out with Janelle. It was so fun. Um, if you guys don't know who Janelle is, she's a customer of ours slash has become a good friend. And um, she lives in central Illinois, really close to the girls. And when I was in Bloomington, she was like, we were messaging and I was like, sometime when I'm in town longer, we should get lunch or something. And she's like, oh, I can bring you guys lunch and I can just hang. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you should. So she brought us tacos and we hung out for like two hours and she got to meet our cousins. Um, and it was really sweet. And she sent me a a really nice text later and, um, it was just really fun, like getting to spend time with her. And we were saying like, we want to do that more. She's part of the Patreon. We actually, Jacqueline Lovejoy messaged me on Instagram and was like, how serious is this like Nashville Patreon meetup? I was like, I mean, we're pretty serious about it. And she was like, I'm crying just thinking it's a possibility. And I'm like, no, same. So be in September, because I've got three weddings in September. So we have yeah. to do it a different date, but I know we'd either have to do it in August possibly, or maybe in October. Yeah. Um, would be good. October would be fun. Cause the weather would be like really dreamy here. Jacqueline Lovejoy actually just reached out. So I can't remember if I said, I think I said this before we started, but the kids have, <laughs> the kids have this thing going on at school that they are learning about the 50 States. And so they're supposed to be trying to get letters and our postcards from the different 50 states. Hmm. And so Brecken had asked me this morning if um if I had any friends in other states that I could get to get to send. Because you know it's like not a competition, but she's gonna make it a competition to make sure right. she gets <clears throat> so anyway, I was like, well I can ask Bama if she can send one from Tennessee. And then um and then she's like, well can we ask Jaden? Like, would Jaden be willing to send one? So I texted Jaden this morning and she was like, I would love nothing more. And I have lots of coworkers in other states. So I was like, well, if you can address it, Breck and Ann Riv, that would be so fun since they're both in the same class and then they can like band together and have the most in the class. So then I posted it on our Patreon and Jacqueline said she could do Oregon. Kelly Weisberg said she could do Georgia. And um, Patty Rogers said she'll do South Carolina for us. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. You should see if Michelle will send California. I did text her about California. I reached out to Lauren Kelly for Texas. Sarah Amaya said she would do Texas as well. Um, and then mom is having um, Karen, her friend Karen, do Hawaii. Nice. <laughs> She's got, um, oh, who are the other ones? She's going to have Aunt Cindy do Arizona. Right. She's got Aunt Jackie doing Indiana. <laughs> That's so cute. I'm trying to think of all my friends and where they live and we can help them get the most. Cause now I'm like, I need to help you in this competition. My mom goes, well, you guys have done sweep the States. Just ask your customers. <laughs> I was like, probably could get. Honestly, I was just thinking, I'm like, all we'd have to do is post it and be like, I'm sure people will be like more than happy to help us help your Mary Wilson will come through for Alaska again. <laughs> so true. She lives where they do Christmas year round. And I literally, I can't get over it. Like before I die, I must go to, it's called, I think it's called like North Pole, Alaska. I think you're right. And they have like Christmas shops and like Christmas set up year round. And I'm like, I must go there. I don't know what it's like. Um, Okay. So what is your good? That Hillary, Hillary lunch? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Um, my good is that Phil came home early yesterday and we went to church with my dad, which was really fun. My mom was singing in the choir and point of grace was the (laughs) guest singer. (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. On the way my home. Favorite in the nineties. Yeah. On the way home, I was trying to remember that song and it had something to do with a candle. Oh, What's yeah. it called? Um, Is it like, keep the candle burning? Hang on. I just looked yeah. this up and I was like, it's candle in the wind. And dad was like, isn't that an Elton John? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, oh yeah. I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of the name, but yeah. They had a lot of good ones, actually. I mean, if you listen to WCAC, you'll probably still hear them because they don't play anything. I was just thinking that. I was like, well, I'm sure if we wanted to hear some 90s Christian music, we just have to tune into the local radio. There's there's either no new Christian music out there or WCAC just really likes the 90s. Because I'm like, these are songs that I listened to in high school and college. Like, I, it seems odd to me that we still have no new well, this album came out in 96 and the song that we loved was called keep the candle burning the candle burning yeah so we were reminiscing about that but um but that was really fun so we dropped my dad off we were going to take him with us but he didn't come i i forgot because i took the picture on phil's phone but i got the salami baguette and i was going to text it to you yesterday but my phone died so phil took the picture of me holding it and smiling on his phone and um i it to you i have I don't think dad would have liked that place he's not a big fan of bread well they have a like they have quiche mom liked the quiche yeah. um and then all of the like entrees you can get with a side salad but it was busy heaven forbid they have biscuits <laughs> yeah oh my gosh it's a whole nother story dad doesn't like biscuits and i didn't know that um so i guess he, he ate them a lot growing up and so he just like doesn't care for them yeah so. Didn't, I didn't know that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, it was busy. And I was like, it's a coffee shop. So I don't feel like he doesn't drink coffee. So I don't feel like he would have like probably, but they do have a full menu. I yeah. just feel like I shouldn't talk about it too much because it's getting busier and busier. And I feel like people just keep going. They're going to have to move. I know. It's not very big inside. <clears throat> I know. Well, it's in Wedgwood, Houston, and there's a bunch of brand new apartment complexes and like houses getting built around it. So when we were there on Friday, we went at 730 in the morning. Like we got there at 730 and it wasn't like it was busy, but it was like consistent. Like we were probably like one of three parties that were in line and we were able to get a table. Like by no means was it like full, but like from the hour that we sat there, it got full and like a line on a Friday morning at like seven. I don't know. I couldn't believe it. Um, but anyways, I, it was really fun that Phil, I was doing my makeup and I had to leave the house at 9. AM and I hear a door slam and then Phil walks in. He's like, Kate Lenz. That's what he calls me. And I was like, <laughs> that's like his only like nickname he doesn't call me babe doesn't call me kate he just says kate Lenz. um and he walked around the corner and i was like so surprised because he wasn't supposed to get home until like 11 so we were originally going to go to late church but then i i was like well you're going to miss late church so i'll just go with my dad because my dad asked me to go with him um but that was really cute and my mom was like or our mom she like came out into the lobby like and found us while we were walking out and she was like I feel like she was happy that we were there (laughs) it was really cute she was like so smiling she's like thank you so much for coming and we didn't tell her Phil was with us and then she was like Phil what are you doing here so and I forgot to tell dad Phil was with me too so he got in the car and he would he always says Philip Philip have you noticed that he always says that he was like he's like Philip Philip and he got in the car and he's like, I didn't know you were coming. So that was cute that everyone was so excited to see Phil. And we got to go to Dozen afterwards, got to get a coffee and the baguette and a salad. <laughs> I actually ordered the full baguette thinking it was the one that you and I ordered. And it came as in like this big. Oh, geez. So it was cut in two. And the other half is in the fridge. Cause I was like, there's no way I can eat this. Well, I tried to recreate it and I will say I needed more Dijon and mustard in my butter. So the butter is actually shallot butter. Oh. I looked at the menu because I was curious. It's um mustard shallot butter. Mustard shallot. That was that must have been what it was because mine was lacking a little bit of flavor. Yeah. It's a lot of butter. Um, there's also, I will say too, if you eat a lot of baguettes, it will, um, tear up the roof of your mouth. So maybe don't have three in 24 hours. <laughs> it's terrible. It was on a sandwich kick for like 
three days. She's like, I had a sandwich for lunch and then I had a sandwich for dinner and then I had a sandwich for lunch again. I was really jonesing for a grinder sandwich. So I got all the stuff at the store. Well, then it was like I had leftovers. So I was like, we well, got to use it up because that shredded lettuce does not go very far. You turn well, it it's expensive. Way. Those grinder sandwiches are not cheap to buy all the stuff. Probably as expensive as getting one from Jersey Mike's by the time you <laughs> Well, no, like to buy it all and to have it for like a couple of people, it's like 65 bucks. Yeah. It's expensive for sure. It's not cheap. Cause I did it for friends recently and I was like, dang, this is an expensive meal. Yeah. And baguettes are shockingly hard to find. I found like one option at Schnucks for like a take and bake. Mm-hmm. So you like just put it in the oven and you bake it for like seven to 10 minutes to just make it harder. Like it's, it's like already, it's just like a soft bread and you just make it crunchy. Right. But I was like, I didn't realize baguettes were not a thing at the grocery store unless Schnucks just doesn't carry them. So I find myself, and then we'll get into the topic today. I find myself checking if my tooth is still there when I eat that bag. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know is like so like weird. But when you've like had a loose tooth for your entire life and you can never bite into things and then like you get a new one. Sometimes when, sorry, my hair is on my face. Sometimes because the bag gets so hard, I'm like, what if it comes out? I mean, there's literally no way my tooth will come out. He literally was like, you could bite on rocks, which I would never do, but not really. You know what I mean? Like he was just like, it's not, not going, (laughs) which I would never do. I'm glad that you at least told us that and reassured us that you're not going to chew on rocks. Oh my gosh. Okay. So tomorrow is our eighth birthday. And we are just quickly going to go over a couple of fun questions that we are remembering. I was going to say this day of remembrance um, for our eighth birthday. So Whitney, what do you remember about opening day? I remember being extremely skeptical that this was even real. (laughs) I was like, oh, this is just a little like harebrained idea of Tara's. And we're, it's not going to go very far. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? I will do what she tells me and I'm along for the ride, but I have absolutely no faith in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I was so all in like three months before. Like, I just remember being like, this is the way out. Cause we didn't like our job. That was, that was like, <laughs> we all worked for a company our dad sold to. And all of us were like, how do we get out of this? faster as fast as possible. Um, and it wasn't because the company was just like horrible. It was just like, things weren't the same when it was no longer my dad's. Was it because the company wasn't horrible? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> they don't listen to this podcast, but it was one of those things where we were all like, we need an exit plan, but we want to like do it together. And so I, I just remember when we talked about it on our family trip that I was like, if we run really hard, we can make this a thing. Agreed. I, um, I remember having a lot of nervous energy going into that day because you have no idea if you're going to turn on the website and anyone's going to like place an order, right? Like, so you just have no clue, like what it's going to look like. And if anyone's going to be interested in it and we had spent like three months hyping it up and counting it down and getting samples made and getting product made and going and seeing the process at like the screen printer. And we had done a giveaway and we had like a certain number of followers before we even started. And we were like on a work trip. And I remember we did this like <clears throat> follow giveaway and didn't we get like 5,000 followers or something crazy like that before? It was like, wasn't it like 15? I don't I thought we had five the day we started. I just know whatever it was. I mean, it was back in the the, the original OG Instagram days where you could actually get followers from organic growth. (laughs) And um, so we had like a good following before we even started, which was crazy to think. Um, But yeah, I just remember having like all this nervous energy. It's kind of like going into any promo day. You're just kind of like, have we done the work? Are we prepped? Do people even care? Do people even know about it? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I I feel like, and I think that this speaks to our personality types because Whitney has always been a good like buffer for us too, because 
there's a lot of like the what ifs that I don't think about that Whitney at least brings up when we bring up new ideas. So it doesn't surprise me that like it would take time for Whitney to be like, is this real? Where <laughs> I was like, it's real. We're quitting our jobs. Like I was like so invested in it, making it go because I was so miserable at this other job that we had. And I've talked, I've, I don't know if I've really talked about that season of life, but it was like maybe a year and a month. It was like 13 months from the time we started to the time I went full-time with Royal and Reese. And I basically begged Whitney and Tara for like maybe all 13 of those months to, to let me quit and to take over because I was like, I just, it was like, I felt trapped. I don't know how else to describe the feeling. I literally felt like trapped and thinking like, I will do anything to make Royal and Reese go. So I don't have to do this. Um, Well, it was on a work trip. I think we were sitting in the airport coming back from a work trip that dad was like, do you want to make this a hobby or do you want this to actually be a career? And I think we realized very early on, it might've been that work trip actually where we made the whole switch because I just remember sitting in that conference room and I was like, this is not our future. Like yeah. this is not the same. They don't, they're not entrusting us the way that we know we can with what we, what we had been doing. Yeah. And clearly we were going to have less and less control and the processes were changing. Like, it was just like, everything was changing around us and we had literally no control over any of it. Yeah. And it was like, <clears throat> we've got to figure out how to make this our exit strategy as quickly as possible. And so I felt like going into opening day, I didn't, it felt, I think I was nervous because it felt very do or die. Like this has to go because we have to make this our future. <laughs> you know totally. what I mean? And honestly, I feel like that, ha- that fire like propelled us to getting it to going faster because you guys worked full-time jobs a lot longer, like a full year longer than I did. Right. Did for two years until we left, Wit left like a month before me, but yeah. And you guys were working full time and then you were packaging orders, doing photo shoots and stuff in the evening. So there was like a long period of time where, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is, but talking about the beginning of Royal and Reese doesn't even feel like we're talking about the same business. It like, doesn't. Does that I was sitting there thinking that I remember when Sarah started, I had just had Briley. Mm -hmm. And, or when she was interning for us, I would be on dealer calls. Like I was doing dealer trainings, you know, Mm -hmm. all day long and in between those calls or, you know, lunches or evenings or whatever is when we were essentially packaging the orders and strategizing and, you know, weekends. I remember (laughs) I've got a picture of like, I've got, I'd lined up all the leggings, all the different designs, and I was putting them in size piles and we were putting them into the shelves. And I mean, it was a lot of time invested in those beginning days. I feel like, uh, I feel like we've lived like 10 lives. Yeah. Totally. And there's like some lives that I legit like remember. And then like from like, I don't remember hardly any of high school. And I don't remember hardly any of like the beginning days of Royal and Reese. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think the thing that was interesting about Royal and Reese and why it feels like so many iterations is because if you think about it, pretty much every quarter we moved locations, Mm -hmm. right? Like we started out here and then we moved to the base. We moved to the storage room and then we took over the entire basement. And then we, um, and then we moved into the, you know, the first office and then we moved into the bigger office. And so it was like every four to six months we were changing something. And so I think that's why it has felt like such a different business every single time. Cause if you think how many times we have changed and pivoted, it's been enormous. And so there's a lot of stuff that feels a little bit like a blur to me because I have to remember like, it almost by season because mm-hmm. it was happening so fast. And if you think about that now, it's kind of nuts to think that it was changing so dramatically so often. I feel like up until like the last, what, nine, nine months, it had been relatively similar because we at least were in the same location for a while. Right. Yeah. But there were still lots of pivot, pivots and changes even in that, that time period. Right. Okay. What, what is your favorite memory or can you pick one? Um, I always enjoyed the, I enjoyed the like employee parties and like just being able to like get to know the employees really well. I also really loved being able to see the end product 
of my designs and my work. Um, I do not love or have any loving feeling for our calls where you guys would be like, whip, we need 30 designs and we need them in less than two weeks. Can you get this done? And I'm like, are you joking? <laughs> also, we need like 15 mommy and me's. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Um, so I don't, I don't miss those days at all, but I do remember specifically one when we, um, like hired Kelsey on and she was like seamstress extraordinaire. She was great. Um, I got to design that like little dress where it had like the little cutouts on the side or whatever. That was probably one of my favorite things we had ever designed because it was beyond like leggings and everything was, was not cost effective at all Mm -hmm. um but it was like one of the cutest dresses I think still to this day I'm still very proud of it so that was really fun to design and work with did you guys save that stuff unfortunately I don't think I did sad we should have pictures of it but we don't have the physical items what's your favorite memory Tara um I was trying to think back because I feel like there's just a lot of special ones over time um, you know, like as the, as the company grew and then also went back to a smaller team, I feel like I have different memories from each, like each area. Mm-hmm. Um, there was something really special about that time in the basement where everybody was like packaging around like that table. Mm-hmm. And it's just, um, I look on that time with really fond memories because that was some of the times that like, you know, we had new interns coming in. That's when Alyssa started. And we always joked about how she talked so much <laughs> and, like <laughs> for everybody um, and how she ended up, you know, moving with us to the new office and things and how Kate like fell over the, the rack in the basement and just totally toppled, like took the rack down with her. And like, <laughs> those were fun times. And then at the new office, like, um, there was just, it was like such a fun experience of like moving into the new space and like moving out of the basement and feeling like we were going into this new era of the business. And like, I just remember when we were in California and we hit 75,000 followers and we got to have that big part, like party, you know, we bought balloons and stuff and we were just adding women's clothes at that time. And, um, from the big office, obviously I loved the friends party. Um, that was such a fun like in my mind, it's just like such an iconic memory for me because I've never gone that that far out on like a <clears throat> on anything that I've planned before. That was probably the most details I've ever put into a party. So that one was super fun. Um, but then I really enjoyed the year that we had post COVID with a smaller team. Like I really enjoyed those days at the office when there was just like <clears throat> 13 of us and it was such a close knit group. And I, um, love all those girls and like spending so much time together one-on-one. Um, and then even like recently just seeing like the addition of the Patreon and being able to get, get to know the BEs on such like a closer level. Um, and being able to have like, even recently been able to do prayer calls with our team because the team is so small. Um, and I think even just like where the business has moved into in the last six months, I think, is probably my favorite season of it. Um, I, I was, you know, we talked about this on the call this morning, but I was literally like, it was so cool this weekend to see, um, Ashley long and like, you know, the miracle that we got to see and be a part of with her family. Um, the fact that she's, that the, the brain enthusiasts or just our customers in general are comfortable enough to reach out to ask for prayer. And then, you know, I don't think there's anything more rewarding than, not just us, but just like as a group, as a whole, to be able to pray for somebody and see a prayer answered. And so I think that that's been the, like the neatest phase of the business. It's just like the the people growing together and friendships continuing to grow and evolve. And um, yeah, I just think that's neat. Yeah. One of my like actual favorite physical memories is the very first, we did like a warehouse opening when we first moved into the first building. And, um, I was like, so panicked. No one was going to show up. And I was like, at that time, like, I feel like the community now, like what it's grown to feels the same as what it was then. Yeah. There's, 
like it, there's like a, an alignment that's re like, ha- well, sorry, what you're going to say. No, I was just going to say, I feel like I re that was actually one of, now that you're saying that I remember that night and just sobbing because there was like people lined up around the block and I, we got to actually physically meet our customers and, um, become friends with them. And a lot of them are still shoppers of ours, which is insane to me. But yeah, I was going to say, I feel like we had grown really big, really fast. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in doing that, we got so caught up with trying to keep up with like orders and everything that it kind of removed us from being able to get to know our customers and get to know the people in the group. And now that we kind of have it set up in a different way, post COVID, we are able to now really deep dive back into fostering the community of our, of the women in the group and our BEs and the Patreon. And it's been way more special to see that happen and kind mm-hmm. of have that redemption, I guess. Mm-hmm. Back. I think too, like when you think back, like when you, when you start as a small business and there's all those personal touches and we wrapped it and we put, you know, tissue and t- twine and we were writing thank yous and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and when you go to the dropship model, that obviously changes the dynamic of that personalization that you can't bring in. And I think the thing that's been neat about it is that even though that's gone, the personalization comes back in from being part of the community, because Mm -hmm. I do feel like people um, that are really invested in the VIP community probably feel that connection way more now than they even did back then Mm -hmm. when we had the personal touches. And I, um, I think that that's the part that has been that I've appreciated because, or that I have what I want to say, not even appreciated that I have liked about getting back to the basics um, Mm -hmm. of the business is that, um, that people can still find us and feel, feel like it's still a small business, even though it's grown from the point that it was when we were, you know, at the very beginning, but that it still feels very connected. um, If you are in, you know, VIP. Well, what I was going to say is I just remember feeling so nervous that no one would show up, but that's such like a testament to the community and how they've always rallied for us. That I just remember like we had paper blinds because we couldn't afford real blinds. No ones. <laughs> it was so treacherous because every day we had these like clips. And when we do photo shoots, we had to like raise them and clip them. And it was so oh, annoying. Great. And then they'd bend and fall and so and they'd rip. And I just remember like lifting up the paper <laughs> blind and I was like <gasps> you guys, there's a lot of people out there. And like, you guys were all like all of our team and everyone was like crowded behind me. And you're like, you're like, are you kidding? And I'm like, no, there's like a line outside. And Tara's like, well, what'd you think? You, you told them there's going to be a doorbuster or something like that. Cause I was so nervous that people wouldn't show up. I made this like really juicy doorbuster and was like, if you're the first, however many in line before 6 PM or 7 PM. And I just remember like going outside and handing out the doorbusters and like being teary, being like, I can't believe all these people showed up for us. Cause we'd had local events at Tara and Whitney's houses. And then once at a country club, but it was hard because like the capacity in which we could fit people in a house was so different than like who could show up. And it's probably like less awkward for people to show up to a warehouse, like a business <laughs> than someone's living room. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was just, it was like so incredible to then like open the doors and be like, Oh, you're, you know, you're Ashley long. Oh, you are actually, um, do you guys remember Leia flurry? She came to like one of our very first events. And then she used to come to all the daytime ones and she just shopped today for the first time since like pre pandemic. And so we were messaging and she was like, I used to come to all of your events. Like I miss you guys. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I literally was going to say like, I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. And so we were like catching up. She was being really sweet, but it was really cool to be like, oh, you are this person like face with a name um, and like get to hug people and like thank them in person for like actually supporting our business. And Julie I think Ward came that night too. What'd you say? Julie Ward came that night. That was the first yeah. time. I her. There's a picture of me hugging Julie Ward and I'm like, like holding on to really tight. My eyes are all squinty, but this leads into our last question. And I'll, I'll say what I was going to say, but, and then I'll let you guys answer. But I, to piggyback off what Whitney was saying, I feel like in the beginning, it was like, 
how the heck do we make this go? Then it moved to like, oh my gosh, we have such amazing customers to the customers are so amazing. We're having such amazing growth to like growth, 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 growth. And then pandemic (laughs) hit. And I feel like now I've always, always, always thought that it was about the customers and like have always said it's not about the clothes. But like, this is the first time I can stand here in full transparency and say like, it's a hundred percent, not about the clothes. It's like 1000% about the customers and the community and how to pour back into them, who we can like financially and emotionally and spiritually support. Like, I feel like it's, it's like our focus on the business, of course, is like, we have to sell clothes to make the business go, but it's the first time where I'm like, no, I can say with like true full confidence that it's really not about the clothes. And I feel like in the past, maybe it was like 70, 30 or 50, 50. And now I can truly wholeheartedly say like, there's been days where things have gone completely defunct and we like pray and God just like brings it. And then we get to have this really cool conversation with the customer. And then we realize why, you know, things transpired the way that they did. So, um, Whitney, what is one thing that you have learned from this business? (laughs) Our last question. (laughs) Um, I mean, in the eight years that we've been in business, nothing is the same as it was was even just a year ago. So something that I learned is you just kind of have to adapt (laughs) or you're going to die. Like your, your business will die out. Um, So you have to adapt. You're constantly pivoting. Um, but I think the, especially what we've all learned in like the last six months is to really, uh, make time to pray and align your business with, with God. Um, and, and Terry even mentioned like being able to sit down and pray every morning. And we've, um, done that with the employees now too, like, which by the way, we used to do that 2 PM on the dot. (laughs) We haven't in the last week. We need to keep that up. Um, but yeah, I feel like, uh, prayer is so huge that Mm -hmm. you don't think it is, but it really is. I actually posted something on Instagram today. It's a quote by Max Lucado, but it says our prayer may be awkward. Our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. And I feel like we have lived that in the last six months, especially. And it's just been really special. I feel like it aligns the business with, uh, the Lord right off the bat, but also, um, he's brought about people that we can pray over Mm -hmm. and, um, just being vulnerable enough to even ask people for prayer, but also people asking for prayer. And I feel like it just opens up, um, this new like intimacy, with customers and creates and fosters community. So I feel like, yeah, it's just been really special. And I feel like, yeah, if I could tell somebody that's wanting to open up their own business, number one, be willing to adapt and you might have to fully change your plan multiple times. It's not going to be the same thing every single day. And, um, yeah, just make sure you're rooted in Christ and that your business is centered in Jesus and really seek out his purpose for what he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's where you find true peace. You're not going to find it in the sales. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find it in your customers. You're not going to find it in your employees. Mm -hmm. Um, comes from him. I want to read this really quick because I thought it like goes along with everything that you're saying. I was texting Janelle after she hung out with us that, um, that day. And we were talking about the business and she's like, it's so cool that God hundred percent led you through all of that. I'm at if gathering tonight. And right now, while you're sending me that story, they're talking about the glory of God being, in, being the goal, shifting your lifestyle to go from leading to being led, slowing your pace, living with rest in your soul by walking with God down his path for you and trusting him through the detours because he knows the way first. Walking with Jesus through the valleys. You guys totally did that. And I watched it happen because I was right here through all of that, watching it from the outside. And I just thought that was like such a sweet picture of a customer turned friend that can like essentially like testify to like watching us walk through hard times, but also like 
recognizing that it was for God's glory and our good. Like Whitney prays that all the time, like for God's glory. And it's also for our good. And I think that's been such a cool thing to experience is that if God never created tension in your life, there wouldn't be a reason for you to pray. Right. And so sometimes I think that he allows tension um, and fill in the blank with whatever that tension is in your life, right. Or hard times, because it allows like space for him to be able to be shown. And I think that instead of like living in a victim mentality through like IVF or Whitney's postpartum journey or Tara's Breyer story, or name a million other things that have gone on in our lives that like, we were able to like flip the narrative right away and just be like, no, this is for God's glory. And, um, and actually try to find like what good God has been working in it instead of being like, why is this happening to me? And why can't I get out, get out of it essentially like quicker? Um, so I'll, I guess I'll answer the question and then I'll pivot to Tara at the end, but I guess I feel like what I have learned in this business is, um, it can all be gone in a second. (laughs) And so to be grateful for the moments you have as you're going through it and to celebrate big wins when you have them and let yourself sit in them because you're always going to want to like move to the next and be like, okay, we accomplished that. Now we go to the next. And I think all three of us have really like savored, um, the good things that are happening in the business in the last year and like celebrating big or small things, because, I think when you are, you are like, when you've met a moment where you think you're going to lose it all, you become so much more grateful for what you have. Um, And I think that can apply to anything. So my next thing I would say is also when you're going through tough times or even good times, instead of questioning the why to um, ask God the how instead. And I think a lot of us waste a lot of time. It's kind of like what you're talking about in the last episode in that like stage of grief where you just are like always in the angry stage and you don't get past like (laughs) that. And I can truthfully say like, even if things aren't perfect, I feel like so much peace and happiness and where we're at right now with the business. Like it's been such a cool 12 months to watch it rebuild and going from a team of 55 to a team of like six or seven um, was humbling, but it also is like what it's supposed to be. Right. And like, I feel like it's the most sustainable, the most peaceful and the most like, right. That it has supposed to be for us three girls and like where God has us for the future. Um, and you guys getting to be home with your kids. Like there's just been so much goodness in asking God, like, instead of being like, why are we in this place to be like, how do we get to the next step with your help? And that's been super special, And also just like getting to watch the fruit of how he's rebuilt it in a different way. And it's looked very different than what we thought. Like, of course, none of us thought we would like shut down our warehouse and start working from home and drop shipping. Um, But all of it has been like really great and fruitful and amazing. So um, I also feel like, I feel like it's also changed all of our character too. Like you can't really go through a fire Mm -hmm. and come out the other side unchanged (laughs) so I feel like I feel like he's reprioritized our priorities Mm -hmm. and um yeah I feel like that alone has been extremely painful (laughs) but is still a gift on the other side of it Mm -hmm. so I'm glad because man if I were the same person I was eight years ago oh I would have no friends I don't know how I had friends back then (laughs) like I was not, I was not, I'm not saying that I'm a good person now, but I, I feel like a little bit better of a person than I was back then. So thank you, Jesus, for his grace. I was going to say too, like our goals used to be like, um, monetary and now our goals are like, can we work half days, three days a week in the summer so we can take our kids to the pool? Like literally like everything went from monetary to being family and like, like, time and peace in our homes. Like, I just feel like God is like completely like flip-flopped everything that we hold dear. And what I once thought was important, like is so, so lame to me now. And the only thing like that I don't have that I wish I had was the ability 
to become a mom. Like I feel like so content with everything in my life, the business, like the, our family. I just feel like the only thing that obviously that I know I'm missing is that. So, so Tara, what have you learned in closing? Um, well, too much inventory is the death of any small business. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to get into that. I'm scared. <laughs> Um, I think that one of the biggest ones is having a victim mentality. It will be your demise. Um, because nobody, like you said, nobody wants to shop with a loser, right. From the standpoint of people sense desperation and they also find it icky. Um, and nobody wants to listen to like your negative sob story all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think we spent too, way too much time trying to figure out why this is happening versus like, how do we just keep moving forward? <clears throat> yeah. And so I think that's one. Um, I think at any point in time, I've said this from the start, but I still feel this way that you're three bad decisions away from going out of business, no matter how well you're doing, it doesn't take much to turn it on a dime and go the other direction. So, you know, there's a lot of coulda, shoulda, what is in business. And I think that, you know, you have to just, you have to move really slowly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, make decisions slow <clears throat> and add people slowly because, um, I think we, I think we were caught up in so much of like, how do we get this done that we just moved really quickly. And then unfortunately, you know, those are decisions that cost us a lot financially over time. Um, whether it was like new software or, um, you know, new products or new machines or anything like that, that sometimes didn't end up making sense. Right. Um, I think one of the things that I feel like has come up in the last couple of months specifically is that, um, having, having to have unwavering faith when you know that God has promised <clears throat> you something that in the natural doesn't look possible mm -hmm. that you look look and can look like an idiot for hanging on to it, mm -hmm. but, um, that it's in those times that you have to hang on to it even tighter because you have to hold to the promise that, you know, is true mm -hmm. and aligning, like you said, I feel like our goals have changed, but like aligning your wants with what God's wants are. So mm -hmm. that the two are the same, like praying for, um, your wants and needs to align with what God's wants and needs are for you. <clears throat> so that they're the same rather than saying, God, will you bless this? God, give me, you know, um, mm -hmm. give me essentially the wants and needs of your heart for me. <clears throat> totally. And then I think the biggest thing that has changed, like you said, is um, while the goals have become family oriented, I feel like instead of how far can we make it and what can we be? And, you know, that as a company, if anything, um, I think the difference is, is now that the, it's so customer centric that the goal is really souls and not wealth mm -hmm. um, that you're looking to invest in the people. Um, I mean, we know that we've got a prayer list like a mile long now. It takes us <clears throat> what an hour and a half to pray <laughs> every day. <laughs> And we keep praying for more and more people to know their story and that God will rise up those people in the community that we can continue to get to know and invest in and um, be a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's been the most enriching piece of this um, is that if you feed the sheep, the rest will come. Mm -hmm. 100%. And I also feel like we say this all the time, but like you can shop anywhere. So like what makes Royal and Grease different and, you know, you can get a pink shirt pretty much anywhere you want to these days. But like what we feel like the Lord has told us over and over and over again is like that the people are, are it. And so I think like the closeness and the community is what made people attracted to it. And like, we do have cute clothes, obviously <laughs> like we have cool product, but like, like I said, you can shop anywhere for those, those cool things. So like our brand isn't really about branding. Like it's our brand is about like how to, like Tara just said, like how to invest in people. And I just feel like that's such a, 
a poignant way to end this conversation is just to say like over eight years, we've clearly learned a lot more. Someday we'll write a book, but a lot more than even we've shared in these this hour. But um, but what we've landed on is life is really, really short and what matters is the people. It's really not about landing in Nordstrom or hitting all these mile markers or having these big houses. It's like when I get to heaven, is God going to be like, well done? Or he's, or, you know, five years ago, I think he would have been like, well, you were distracted, you know? So I think it's like the, the turn of, of where we've come is really special and sweet. Any closing thoughts? Also, I feel like here recently, God has been like each person that asks for an invoice um, is like a way to <clears throat> point our, our um, appreciation and acknowledgement back to Jesus and just thank him for bringing that person, but also acknowledging how, what an honor it is that they're even asking for an invoice or even in, mm-hmm. in our VIP group and engaged. And um, I think making sure that you're not just assuming that this is a right because it is not like these people do not have, like Kate said, they can shop anywhere, but it is an honor that they're spending their time with you in, um, in your group or wherever you're at. <clears throat> and I feel like no big box store thinks that way. <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> I'm not going to get on this like pedestal and be like, Oh, shop small. But like, it's the small shops that have gone through the really hard time post COVID. I mean, I guess we all have, but small ones are really appreciative that you're still here and still sticking around. So, um, but yeah, no, it is a huge honor that we even have customers and we have really beautiful customers that we've become friends with. So it's been just a, it's been a cool whirlwind of an eight years for sure. Well, yeah. and I think the one thing that is so unique about the customer base is that you know, when you look at influencers and you think, and you hear people on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever it is, talk about haters or trolls or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I think that that's the part that's been so unique is that we just have not experienced that. Mm -hmm. And we have, I feel like the people that are in the group are so kind and they're also so protective over each other. Mm -hmm. Like if there is somebody who says something negatively, they are like mama bear immediately <laughs> not even for our sake, but for the person that like, you know, is saying a kind like they're just coming. Um, and so I think that that's so neat too, is to see not only are they um, rallying around us, but they're also rallying around each other. And totally. it is, you know, in a world where you say women support women, that should be, um, that should be the case. Um, and so many times on the internet, it's not, but I feel like we're one of the exceptions to that rule where it truly is. I would a hundred percent agree. I feel like that's like a catchphrase that gets thrown around a lot and not practiced well. Yeah. And it's, and it's sad to know that that's like the case. Cause I think women are the first ones to tear other women down. Yeah, It's really sad. And in a world where a lot stolen from women anyways. I feel like we really want to stand for like actually supporting each other. And I think prayer is like one of the most beautiful and palpable ways that we can do that for each other. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really cute too, because our brand enthusiasts, um, which is not exclusive. If you would like to be a brand enthusiast, all you have to do is comment on Facebook posts. So if it's something that you think would be fun, you can message me, you get a discount and free product and gift cards and all kinds of fun stuff. But um, they had like learned the culture of prayer and like do it for each other because it's like fostered in this group chat together. And I just think that that's really like sweet and special that they have like now created their own like mini community within the community. And the, like the number one priority is to pray. So. Agreed. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you guys, this was such a sweet conversation and very reflective. We hope that you have enjoyed this this podcast. We do try to record every single week. And we've mentioned our Patreon a couple of times. There is a Patreon that you can be a part of if you would like more sister content, more vlogs, more of just like the behind the scenes of our life. Um, We do recipes, vlogs of our life, but like I said, behind the scenes content that we aren't posting anywhere else on the internet. There's also um, meetups and a book club if you'd like to be a part of it. So you can just look at the bio of each of our episodes and you get ad-free episodes of the Patreon as well. So if you want more of the sisters and more of this tight-knit community feeling, like if you feel like you don't resonate with that or want to be a part of that and be closer. The Patreon is a great way to like make new friends and really get to connect with a group of women that will make you feel really, really special and loved. Um, It's not just us. Like they do it for each other as well. So please leave us a five-star review on Apple. If you like what what you heard here, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch the video version of all of our episodes. Otherwise guys, we will see you in the next episode and thanks for listening. Bye.